back. I apologize for my voice. I'm kind of sick right now, but we're gonna proceed with today's video anyway, and that is the bookshelf tour. So first we're gonna come over to this one. Now this is my Harry Potter display, obviously, as you can see. So we have Newt Scamander, and we have the baby Niffler, and then I have Newt Scamander's wand, which I got for Christmas, and then we have Pickett, the bow truckle, and then these are just some Harry Potter notebooks that I got in the wizarding box that Loot Crate does. Um, I don't have that subscription anymore because it just got to be too expensive for me. And then we have a replica of Newt's Notebook. And then I have the Case of Beasts. It's basically like uh, a behind the scenes book for Fantastic Beasts. Then I have this, My Wizard Way of the Ozarks. Um, program. I kept it because it looks like the sixth year potions book and I like it. This is a hollowed out book that I got at last year's con. Then we're just going to come over here. I have some uh, feathers. This one's actually supposed to be a quill. This one is a feather that I found when I was in college. Um, I have this homemade one. That I got at last year's con. And then I have Nymphadora Tonks' wand and Neville Longbottom's wand right there. Um, they came in the, my roommate gave them to me because she got them in a, um, those mystery wand things that you can get from like Walmart and other places. They're just plastic. They're not anywhere as nice as the Nobel Collection recreations. So next we have my nearly headless Nick pop. Um, his head is supposed to like come off a little bit, but he fell and his head popped off. So I had to hot, I had to super glue it down. So now his head doesn't move. And we have Remus Lupin. He's kind of missing his wand. Again, he got dropped and the wand broke. And then over here we have Queenie from Fantastic Beasts and Percival Graves from Fantastic Beasts. Personally, one of my favorite characters, even though, you know, he's Grindelwald in disguise. Then we're gonna come down to the second Harry Potter, and I'm not gonna pull these out because that would just take way too long. But basically I have, I believe, yeah, uh, Prince of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows. I don't have the Sorcerer's Stone or, <clears throat> excuse me, or um, Chamber of Secrets. And then I have a chocolate frog box that I actually got the chocolate frog from Universal and I kept it. And then we have my Rowena Ravenclaw uh, chocolate frog card that I got. Then we have little Fleur. Um, I have this print that I got in an owl crate. And behind that we have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Fantastic Beasts Crowns of Grindelwald, The Tales of Beetle the Bard, and then this... Uh, movie magic thing that I got when I was younger and I just kept it and then we have Hedwig and Pigwigan and a crocheted handmade Dobby that I got from last year's con and we have Luna Lovegood and Harry with the Sword of Gryffindor I have this snitch that if you press the button press the button oh it's dead You can kind of see it. It used to go faster, but I think the batteries are dying. And then I have a when in doubt, go to the library, uh, enamel pin that I got in an owl crate. And next we're gonna move on to the second shelf. Here we have my Twilight slash fantasy um, books. So yeah, let's just get to it. That came in an owl crate. Um, it's from, I believe, The Cruel Prince, and it says, I like for things to happen, stories to unfold, and if I can't find a story, in a, a good enough story, I make one by Holly Black. And then, on the back, it says, I am mere, I am a mere mortal, and if you are a prince of fairy, you have much to lose, and I have nothing. So, yeah. 
I really like this. It opens. There's nothing in it. And it says sharpen your blade, harden your heart. So yeah, I don't really keep anything in it. I just keep it on this shelf because you will see why. So first we have the whole Twilight Saga, including Life After Death, which is Twilight Reimagined. Twilight's hanging out behind New Moon because they won't all fit. But yeah, these are all by Stephanie Meyer. Then we have the Twilight graphic novels. Um, yes, I am that person who owns all of them. I am still waiting for New Moon, the graphic novel volume two. I don't know when that's gonna come out, but I will still buy it. So yeah, and these were all by Stephanie Meyer again. Then I have the Twilight Companion, the Unauthorized Guide to the Series by Lois H. Grush. Then we have the three, the thir first three books of the Mortal Instruments series, City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass by Cassandra, Cl Cassandra Clare. Then I have the Shadow Hunters Cl Codex by Cassandra Clare and Joshua Lewis. Then I have an illustrated history of notable shadow hunters and denizens of Downworld by Cassandra Clare, illustrated by Cassandra Jean. Then we have The Mortal Instruments Companion, again by Lois H. Grush. We have Shadowhunters and Downworlders, a Immortal Instruments Reader, edited by Cassandra Clare. I have The Mortal Instruments City of Bones Shadowhunters Guide. Then I have Lenovia's Vow and Dragon's Oath by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. These are House of Night novellas about different characters in the series. I no longer own the House of Night. Books, but I love the novellas so much because they're like I said specifically about one character and I like to get another character's heads and stuff and see things that we didn't see in the series so yeah that's kind of why I have these. I have the fledgling handbook 101 by PC Cass with Kim Donor again this is has to do with the House of Night series that I no longer have. We have the Iron King by Julie Kagawa then we have The Cruel Prince and the Wicked King, both by Holly Black. These are the Folk of the Air series. Um, the Cruel Prince is the Alcrate exclusive edition. I'm thinking of purchasing the regular edition so it matches my Wicked King, but I'm not quite sure yet. I guess we'll just see. Then this is my retelling slash movie adaptation uh, shelf. As you can see, I have my wand right there. That is the one that I chose when I went to Universal, and now we're gonna look at the books. First we have Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West, Son of a Witch, and A Line Among Men, all by Gregor Maguire. These are his, if I, can, I believe it's called The Wicked Years, and it's basically like a backstory retelling of the Wicked Witch of the West, and I love them, because I'm a huge fan of the Broadway musical. And we have Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page which is again another Wizard of Oz retelling. Then we have Heartless by Marissa Meyer, which is a Queen of Hearts retelling. Then we have Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oakes, which again is another Queen of Hearts retelling. Then we have The Sherlockian by Graham Moore, which is kind of a Sherlock Holmes retelling. It's basically the story of like obviously a mystery that um, Sherlock Holmes, not Sherlock Holmes, uh, the author of Sherlock Holmes, Arthur Conan Doyle and Bram Stoker have to like kind of solve and there's also a storyline in our time. Then we have A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kimmier and this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. We have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas which is another Beauty and the Beast retelling. We have Beastly which has been adapted into a film by Alex Flynn and again it's another Beauty and the Beast retelling. Then we have Maleficent, which is one of the villain series that Disney is doing to go along with each of their movies. And yeah, it's... Then we have Hocus Pocus and the all-new sequel, which is a novelization of the first film, and obviously it has a sequel with it. And this is The House with a Clock in Its Walls by John Belaris. Uh, it has been adapted into a film, and it's actually like a middle-grade mystery book. This is my bind up slash spirituality uh, shelf. So we have my Union Jack because I'm a huge fan of British culture. I have the complete Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and this is the leather bound Barnes and Noble edition. The complete Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. I want to actually get rid of this one and get the Barnes and Noble leather bound edition so everything will match. I have the Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. It only contains Interview with a Vampire. Vampire Lestat and Queen of the Damned. I have 
classic works, two no novels, and 19 short stories by F. Scott Fitzgerald. We have The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. It has five novels in one story, and on the back it says, Don't Panic. This one was really hard to read on the shelf, but it's Epic Tales, Greek Myths and Tales, and this is, again, another Barnes & Noble bind-up. Okay, over here on the spirituality side, we have Wicca, a guide for the Salad Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Living Wicca, a further guide for the Solitary Practitioner by Scott Cunningham. Cunningham's Book of Shadows, The Path of an American Traditionalist by Scott Cunningham. We have Wicca for One, The Path of the Solitary pa The Path of Solitary Witchcraft by Raymond Buckland. Fundamentals and phil Philosophy and Practice. Wicca for Beginners by Thea Sabin. Nocturnal Witchcraft, Magic After Dark by John Costantinos. I can't pronounce the last name. Complete Book of Tarot Spreads by Evelyn Berger and Johannes Feiberg? Feiberg? I don't know. The Only Tarot Book You'll Ever Need by Sky Alexander. Okay, we're gonna hop up to the top of the second bookshelf where you can see... This has Alcrate past items in it, where I just don't have anywhere to put them. Uh, the Alcrate theme for the current month, which is March. So it kind of just hangs out there until next month. I have this cute little wooden mushroom that I've forgotten to paint a thousand times. We're gonna pick this up. And we have some ravens that I got from Yankee Candle. And I have this, which came in an Alcrate. That's the wax burner, or the wax melt thing seal that we got in now crate then we have the theme for next month or this upcoming month which is the dark side behind that I just have this little wooden this little uh, plastic rose that I got it reminds me of Phantom of the Opera which is why I bought it and then we have this which is a perfume box that I got um, this is a mug that we got in the I think the across the universe owl crate and it's really tiny. I usually use like really freaking big mugs to make cocoa in. So it's just a little too short for me. So it kind of just hangs out here. Like I have pens in it and then I have some really pu pretty beauty brushes that I hardly ever use. And then in here we have the past owl crate pins that I have nowhere to put. So they just kind of hang out in there. And over here we have my second Harry Potter shelf. I have this cool box that um, looks exactly like Newt's crate or Newt's uh, case. So if we, you can kind of see it's on Muggle Worthy right now, which is why it looks like the inside of his case. We have mini Newt and mini baby Niffler. Um, I have a thing that came with Picket and it just explains things about bow truckles. Then I have this Harry Potter mug that's inspired by the Marauders. Again, it came in an owl crate and it's just. It's too small for me to be able to use for cocoa because I usually make like two packets of cocoa. So it just won't fit in that. And then I have this little handmade Niffler that I got from last year's con because when I went last year, Fantastic Beasts had only been out for like three months. So no retailers were selling uh, plush Nifflers. So I just went ahead and bought one. Then I have this Pygmy Puff that I got from Universal last time I went and I just think he's super cute. They had jumbo ones too, but there was no way it was gonna fit in my suitcase. <laughs> then I have this ceramic uh, serpent, because I'm Slytherin. And so I made it when I was like 13 or 14, when I was in Texas with my half sister. And then this is basically a wand book for Harry Potter. It has every single wand from every single character, except I don't believe it has the one from Fantastic Beasts in it. I don't remember, I'd have to check. And then this is Newt Scamander, a movie scrapbook. Um, it came in one of the uh, Wizarding World boxes, and I love it because it's all about Newt Scamander and like his character, and his personality and costumes and just really cool behind the scenes things that I love. Then I have Harry Potter, A Journey Through History of Magic. I think this is the one that's based off of the um, London exhibit. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've looked through it. Then I have Inside the Magic, The Making of Fantastic Beasts, which used to be over on that shelf before I rearranged my shelves last 
yesterday. Then I have Harry Potter, the illustrated edition, which is a uh, Sorcerer's Stone. So it kind of just hangs out there. Put the serpent back and that. So yeah, that's my second Harry Potter shelf and I love it. Here we have my contemporary shelf. Sitting right here is my series Block Wand, which was one of the first ones I ever got. Um, Twinkle with Love by Sanja Menon. Gray by Pete Wentz. The Wonderful, All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. Foolish Hearts by Emma Mills. Dear Evan Hansen, the novel by Val Image with Stephen Levinson, Benji Pus Pask, and Justin Paul, which are the creators of the musical. Be More Chill by Ned Vizzini. By Lightning by Chris Colfer. Fulton Our Stars by John Green. An Abundance of Catherines by John Green. Then we have The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. Falling for Hamlet by Michelle Ray. The Dead Queen's Club by Hannah Kappen. And last but certainly not least, my favorite book of all time, Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This shelf is kind of just a catch-all. I don't know where half these books would go. They would just go on shelves by themselves. If if I let them, so they're kind of just, they kind of all just hang out here. First we have White Stag by Kara Berberi. Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. Mirage by Samaya Dowd. The BBC Doctor Who How to Be a Time Lord Official Guide. We have Whoology, which is a Doctor Who The Official Miscellanery by Kevin Scott and Mark Wright. And we have Updated and Complete The Sorcerer's Companion, A Guide to the Magical World of Harry Potter by Alan Zola Krosnick and Elizabeth Krosnick. We have The Lexicon, An Unauthorized Guide to Harry Potter Fiction and Related Materials by Steve Vander Ark. Then we have The Complete Tolkien Companion by J.E.A. Tyler. We have The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. We have Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. This is the only Hunger Games book that I own because I unhold Hunger, the Hunger Games and Mockingjay, because personally, Catching Fire is just one of my favorites. Then we have the Unauthorized Guide to the Series, The Hunger Games Companion by, again, Lois H. Grush. Then we have Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. This is the movie tie-in cover, so I'm kind of conflicted on whether I to where it should stay on this show or if it should move over to the movie tie-in slash adaptation shelf. Then we have The Umbrella Academy Apocalypse Suite by Gerard Way and Gabriel Baugh. Then we have The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. We have Black Butler Volumes 1 and 2 by Yana Toboso. Then we have The Ancient Mage's Bride Volumes 1 and 2 by Kor Yamazaki. Then we have Vampire Night Volume 1 by Matsuri Hino. We're going to come down here which this is the historical fiction, true story, slash classics. Again, that's kind of just a catch-all shelf because I have nowhere else to put these. But first we have this, um, what do you call them? Book covers or book bags, something like that, um, from Alcrate. And it says books are a uniquely portable magic. First we have Sex with Kings, 500 Years of Adultery, Power, Rivalry, and Revenge by Eleanor Herman. This is about the mistresses of the kings of Europe. And we have Lawless, a novel based on a true story by Matt Bondurant. I believe that he's like the great grandson of the Bondurants that are in the Lawless movie. We have Mad Kings and Queens by Alison Rattle and Alison Back. Of Evil, The Science Behind Humanity's Dark Side by Julia Shaw. We have The Bling Ring, How a Gang of Fame Obsessed Teens Ripped Off Hollywood and Shocked the World by Nancy Jo Sales. We have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. We have The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Choksi. Then we have I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. I actually had to purchase this for a lit class in college and I loved it so much that I actually kept it and didn't try to sell it back. We have The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. We have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Then we have Tales of Norse Mythology by A.E. Keery. Then we have Mythology, Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes by Edith Hamilton. We have Hamlet by William Shakespeare. We have Aristophanes, which, contain, which are plays by him. 
and it contains clouds, wasps, and birds. I had to purchase this for a Greek civilization uh, class, and I loved it so much that I kept it. Then I have Sophocles for Trotted Four Tragedies, which is Ajax, Women of Trachis, Electra, and Philatides. Again, I had to purchase this for my Greek civilization class, and I liked it, so I kept it. Okay, last shelf, my friends. This is my band shelf. Um, as you can tell from my, some of my past vlogs, I'm really into bands. I love bands so much. Bands and music are my life. And if we hop over here, you can see that's my band wall where all my signed things and VIPs go. So yeah, first we're gonna come over here and this is my Palais Royale beret. It was on sale, so I bought it. I don't know how to wear a beret, so it kind of hangs out here for decoration. Then I have my band box that me and my roommate created. It's basically, if we take these down, filled with pictures of like my favorite band members. So like you have Kellen Quinn from Sleeping With Sirens, Jack Bearcat from All Time Low, uh, Jaime Percato from Pierce the Veil, my baby Ben Bruce and Andy Beersack. He's from Ask Alexandra and he's from Black Veil Brides. Then we have Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy, Austin Carlisle from Of My and Men, formerly, and then Dennis Stoff, formerly of Asking Alexandria. So yeah. I go to a lot of shows and so I get a lot of things. So I just kind of, I put them in here. And then, yeah, it's just an amalgamation of stuff. I kind of just throw stuff in there. And then we have this skull planter, which came in an owl crate. As you can see, I suck at planting things, so it's just gonna hang out here and look cool and aesthetic-like. This is a Panic at the Disco um, Pray for the Wicked candle that I got in a pre-order. And then I have this uh, fake LED candle. It says the word alive, violent noise, but I don't listen to the word alive, so it kind of just hangs out here. Again, aesthetics. Then I have my Palais Royale Boom Boom Room Side B, which just came out this year, early last, or late last year. Then we have, these are for, is a battery pack for my fairy lights that I put up yesterday. These are Owlcrate things and prints that I just love. I need to get another strand, because I think I'm gonna take down this, sell this, and it's just gonna go like all the way across my wall, cause aesthetics. So yeah, I'm gonna turn that off. This is a Palais Royale teacup that I got in a pre-order for uh, Boom Boom Room Side B. This is an all-time low box that uh, Fanjoy used to have, and I bought the holiday box and it came with that. And then in here I have um, this bracelet from an owl crate and this necklace from an owl crate. So it kind of, it's just a jewelry holder for right now because I don't have any rolls to put it. And it's cute and I love it because Palais Royale are my babies. This is the beginning of my to be read bookshelf. Um, this is, these are basically fantasy books. And if you look right here, you can see my Fred Weasley wand. Um, I bought Fred Weasley because he's one of he's my favorite twin, and my roommate got George Weasley's wand, so we basically have like brother wands. Starting us off is the City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare. Then we have the Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, and Maureen Johnson. Then we have the first two books in the Infernal Devices series, which is Clockwork Angel and Clockwork Prince, again by Cassandra Clare. Then we have Shadow Hunters and Myths, Discovering the Legends Behind the Mortal Instruments by Valerie Estelle Frankel. Then we have the Infernal Devices Clockwork Angel Graphic Novel by Cassandra Clare with art by, not even gonna try to pronounce that name. Then we have Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare, which is the first book in the Dark Artifices, Artifices, however you pronounce that word. Then we have Hidden Sea, A Tale of the Once and Future Nutcracker by Gregory McGuire. We have Caraval by Stephanie Garber. Then we have Four Dead Queens by Astrid Schulte. Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. Sin Fury by Tracy Banghart. Then we have Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pal Preto. Then we have Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie. The Afterlife of Holly Chase by Cynthia Hand. Eye in the Deep by Adrian Young. Winter Song by S.J. Jones. My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. 
Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine. Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. Stitching Stars by Kaya Keegan. And The Merciless by Daniel Vega. This shelf is kind of like nonfiction, spooky stuff, uh, novelizations, uh, got some manga over there, and historical fiction, and serial killers. So again, it's kind of a whatever fits shelf. First we have Ghostly Beacons, Haunted Lighthouse of North America, Haunted Lighthouses of North America by Therese Lanigan Schmidt, Missouri Caves and History and Legend by H. Dwight Weaver, America's Most Haunted Hotels by Jamie Davis Whitner, Whitmer and Robert Whitmer, Haunted Graveyards of the Ozarks by J David E. Harkins, Ghosts of Country Music by Matthew L. Swain, Hell House and Other True Hauntings from Around the World by Allison Rattle and Allison Vale. Then we have Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, collected by Alvin Schwartz, the complete three book collection. I was holding off to read these until like October, but the movie's coming out soon, so I might just zip through these in an afternoon. I don't know, time will tell. Then we have Hemlock Grove by, Gry by Brian McGreevy. We have The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. Then we have Horns by Joe Hill, consequently right next to The Woman in Black by Susan Hill, because they both, both the movie adaptations star Daniel Radcliffe, formerly of Harry Potter. We have Supernatural Nevermore by Keith R.A.D. Candido. Then we have the official movie novelization of Crimson Peak, uh, screenplay by... Guillermo del Toro and Matthew Robbins, novelization by Nancy Holder. Then we have the official movie novelization of Suicide Squad, uh, written by David Ayer, and the novelization is by Mary Wolfman. Then we have Disney's Alice Through the Looking Glass, the movie novelization based off the screenplay. Then we have The Beast Within by Serena Valentino. Then we have The Isle of the Lost by Melissa Dela Cruz. Then we have Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, The Sword of Summer by Rick Riordan. We have Roseblood by A.G. Howard. Then we have Sherlock Holmes and the King's Evil and Other New Adventures of the Great Detective by Donald Thomas. Then we have Death Note Black Edition Volume 1 by Sagumi Oba. Then we have L. Change the World written by M. And Death Note, Another Note, The Los Angeles BB Murder Cases, again, written by M. We have the first three books in the Plantagenet and Tudor uh, series by Philippa Gregora, Gregory, and that is The White Queen, The Kingmaker's Daughter, and The Red Queen. And we have The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. Darkly Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay. My Ripper by Stephen Hunter, Night Calls by David Peary, and Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. This is the first in the Silence of the Lambs series. And now we're on the second to last shelf. This is an amalgamation of classics, um, some contemporary, some adult, uh, some nonfiction, poems, novel, novellas. Uh, fantasy kind of just again it's more of a whatever shelf so starting us off is the Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orkesi, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Death Comes to Pemberley by P.D. James, Darcy's Passions by Regina Jeffers, Lolita by Vladimir no Nabokov, the Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. High Rise by J.G. Ballard. Fight Club by Chuck, Chuck Palahniuk. The Longest Ride by Nicholas Sparks. A Separate Piece by John Knowles. The Upside of Unrequired by Becky Albertalli. Love Letters to the Dead by Ava Delera. When Dimple Met Rishi by Sondra Menon. Stranger Than Fan Fiction by Chris Colfer. They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Then we have Jesus Through Pagan Eyes, Bringing Neo-Pagan Perspectives with the Progressive Vision of Christ by Reverend Mark Townsend. In Real Life, Love, Lies, and Identity in the Digital Age by Neve Shulman. The Other Tutors, Henry VIII's Mistresses and Bastards by Philippa Jones. Story of the Titanic by Henry Hurst. 
Titanic Voices from the Disaster by Deborah Hopkinson. A Night to Remember, the classic account of the final hours of the Titanic by Walter Lord. Robert Frost, Selected Poems. Nix and the House of Night, Mythology, Folklore, and Religion in the PC and Kristen Cast Vampire Series, edited by Kristen Cast, or PC Cast. Nefret's Curse, another House of Night novella by PC Cast and Kristen Cast. The last one for this shelf, The Bind Up of Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Again, I was probably really stupid to buy this, so I've decided that I'm going to buy each of the Lord of the Rings separately and just keep this one too, just, you know, to look pretty. This shelf is a combination of books I've read and books I haven't read and a little giveaway box right there that I might be doing later on in my booktube career, so yeah. First we have this Doctor Who bind up of The Silent Stars Go By and Touched by an Angel. I have The Complete Book of Ghosts, A Fascinating Exploration of the Spirit World from Apparitions to Haunted Places by Paul Rowland. Now we're getting into books that I have read or they're just there to look pretty basically. And first off we have Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. I love this little edition because it looks exactly like the first editions that came out a long time ago. Then we have my Jim Henson's Labyrinth Coronation Volume 1 by Simon Spurrier. Then we have Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. Then we have some little books from when I was a child. We have How Spiders Stop the Litter Box by Robert Krauss. Boy Wants a Dinosaur by that person. And we have Hopscotch the Tiny Bunny written by Stephanie Kalmanson. I kind of, I'm not planning on having children or anything, but I just can't bring myself to get rid of these because these three are my favorite books to read when I was a child. So yeah, I'm just going to keep them forever then. Then I have What We Saw, The Events of September 11th and Words, Pictures, and Videos by CBS News. And it actually came with like a DVD, which has like all the news stuff with it. Then I have A History of New York in 101 Objects by Sam Roberts. I personally love going to New York. I, own, I go like once every three or four years. So it's just interesting to like look through. Oh yeah, I got it in a, a giveaway. Yeah, by Simon & Schuster on Goodreads. And so yeah, it just basically tells you things about New York City. Put that back in there. Then I have some more books from when I was a child. We have The Lorax by Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss, and Your Little Turtle and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. Then we have The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey Visual Companion. Again, this is one of those like behind the scenes type books that I love. Then we have this Complete Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. It's one of those Barnes & Noble bind ups again. And it kind of just has all the stories of Peter Rabbit. I never read Peter Rabbit as a child, but I love, I love Peter Rabbit. He's so cute. And then I have The Complete Tales of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. This has more stories in it than the little mini one does. And Pooh is my favorite Disney character. So I just had to get this. This is The Case Files by Dr. Dr. John Watson. It's just kind of one of those books that um, has like little things that you can pull out and look at pertaining to sh certain short stories that you've read and it goes over like the cases and stuff. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And then my favorite book on my whole entire bookshelf is My Wicked Grimry. It's a behind the scenes look at the hit Broadway musical. It looks like it's damaged. It's supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like the old spell book or whatever that uh, she has. So it kind of just has like characters and makeup and costumes and just all those cool things that I love. So yeah, that is the end of my bookshelf tour. Thank you guys for sticking around. If you stuck around this long, some of you may have bailed when I hit the to be read shelf which is okay because you've already seen those in my books I haven't read 2019 video I believe but yeah if you have any questions regarding like my setup or 
any books on my shelves that you'd like me to talk about a little bit more. I can do like a discussion video or something like that about it. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.